All right, so here we go. So today we are uh, talking about uh, how to build a, re a winning strategy for your recruitment. Uh, my, my name is Jason French. Obviously, I'm an employee here at Field Level, and I've been here for almost two years and loving every second of it. I really get to I get a chance to uh, work within the area of which I've been working in for many years, which is I've been a high school football coach, so getting to work with athletes and parents and coaches, both college and high school and club levels, has been a lot of fun. Uh, coached a long time in LA, uh, been a part of two city championship uh, programs, uh, coached uh, multiple uh, college level athletes, uh, guys that have moved on to play professional ball, some NFL, CFL, XFL, uh, arena. Uh, so I've gotten a chance to work with a lot of great great young people over the years. And I also do some clinic speaking for USA football, uh, where I just kind of get to fly around and around the West Coast mainly and uh, teach their curriculum. It's a lot of fun. So today's agenda uh, is we're going to talk about how to refine your options when it comes to recruiting. Uh, then we're going to start talking about uh, the different paths that you can take to get you to a successful point in recruiting. And then uh, talk to you a little bit about field level and then open up for a question and answer time. I asked that uh, in the question and answer time, I'm gonna use that chat area that I just used with you guys at the beginning of this as where I'm gonna field the questions from. Uh, there is a question and answer area in our webinar, like in this, in this platform, but I, uh, I'm not, I like to use only the chat box. So again, there's a little chat uh, bubble there. Um, that's where you guys would be able to throw those questions in at the end. And again, I ask that you wait to the end uh, to ask those questions. All right, let's move forward here. So how to create a winning recruiting strategy is today's, uh, today's topic. All right, so first thing is refining your options. So uh, whether you know this or not, there are a ton of options out there. Uh, there's Division I, NCAA, NCAA Division II, NCAA Division Three, the NAIA, which many people uh, in the sport would uh, liken to um, Division II level athletics. Uh, the NJCAA is a very large uh, junior college association around the country. And then I also threw in uh, the NWAC, which is the Northwest Athletic Conference. Uh, the NWAC is a uh, smaller uh, grouping of co junior colleges in the Pacific Northwest. And uh, they're a great organization that we are working with. Uh, we've been working with for years, but are going to probably be developing a more uh, close relationship and partnership. Um, so there are so many options out there for you and your athletes and I, and I know that today's uh, you know group that's going to be listening today is going to be mainly parents and athletes so first what you guys should be thinking whether your parent or athlete is what level of play is right for the athlete or you the athlete uh, not only is it should you be thinking about the division are you a division one level athlete are you a division two level athlete um, do you need to maybe go to junior college first to refine your skills or build up your academics whatever the case may be you should start thinking about those things first, what level you're at. And uh, we're going to have, this is uh, a, a bit of a shameless plug here, we're going to do a, another webinar this month about is the D1 life right for me? And I'm going to talk with uh, one of my colleagues, Taylor Grigsby, uh, who played uh, Division One baseball and I played uh, Division Three football. So we're going to get together and we're going to talk about you know, the, different, the differences of playing at these different levels and what to think about when, when considering what level to play at. We'll, get, we'll do more of a deep dive on that. Uh, we're going to do that on August 15th. I'll send you the link to that uh, webinar uh, tomorrow in our follow-up emails. Uh, the next thing is you, what you should be doing is after you've thought about yourself, what level of play can you play at, uh, what conference also you want to play at. Because uh, you know within certain divisions, there's different conferences that are more competitive than others. So figuring that out as well. You should be talking to your coach about this. Uh, it is important very important to make sure that you and your coach are on the same page when it comes to your level of play. Um, also, you know, within that conversation, uh, do you, you want to think about, is it best to go to a division one school and maybe have to sit on the bench for a while, or do I want to play right away and go to a division two or division three? Those are questions to ask yourself and to talk about with your coach. Um, so talking with your coach, that's another webinar that we're going to do this month, August 22nd, how to communicate with your coaches about recruiting. That's going to be a crucial thing to learn going forward, or whether you are a, a senior in high school about to start your next, your last year of high school ball, or with your incoming freshman, and you're gonna, you wanna start learning about recruiting from, from jump. Based on that conversation with your coach is where you can decide what level of play is right for you. So you, you and the coach are on the same page going into this process.
Next is once you've figured out what level of play you should be playing at and it would be a good fit for you athletically, is where in the country do you want to play? So we've got little maps here, a little graphic that we put together. Division one schools, 351 division one programs in our country. And those blue little dots signify areas all over the country that there's a division one program. In division two, II, NCAA division two, 316 schools in division two. And look at all those orange dots all over the country. Division three, 448 schools. Now they're all over the country, mainly over in the, in the Midwest into the East Coast, uh, a lot of them in, in, in Texas as well, and then they're scattered a little bit throughout the West Coast, but so many options at the NCAA uh, you know, association that has these different levels of play all over the country. The NAIA that I touched on earlier, 251 schools. The NJCAA, 264 schools, and the NWAC up north in the Pacific Northwest, 36 schools. So there are options nationwide in areas that you may have never even thought of or considered in your life that you can look into. What I'm gonna do tomorrow, along with those links about the different webinars that we're hosting this month uh, based on uh, is the Division One Life Right for Me, how to communicate with your coach. I'm also gonna send links to these, these different locations to find uh, a map where you can you know, zoom in and find different names of schools and different locations so you can do your research there as well. After you've figured out what level of play is right for you, after you've looked all over the country and figured out where geographically you're interested in playing, next is scholastically, where can you go? Uh, we all can, can have uh, aspirations to play at certain schools, uh, but every school has a certain academic uh, requirement and threshold that you need to meet. And do you have those grades to make it in that school? If you have great grades, you're gonna have lots of options, right? You're gonna be able to pick and choose uh, where you wanna go because you know you'll be able to be admitted academically into these schools. But if you're bad, if you have bad grades, they're not so great, uh, you're gonna have to find schools that are gonna be more able to take uh, you as a student there as well. Lastly is we're gonna talk about finding the financials of things. Not, we all hear about the athletes that get these full scholarship rides, or many people will even talk about how they're going to a school uh, because of a scholarship. But uh, really, um, there's, there's many schools that do offer full athletic scholarships, but many schools do not offer full athletic scholarships. They're able to offer partial scholarships or um, different schools are able to piece together different financial aid packages based on your grades or your need-based uh, issues. So another thing, and we're gonna again discuss this uh, in, our, in our webinar this, this month with how to discuss things with your coach about recruiting, but coming to the table about what are, are realistic things to think about about your financial situation. Now, we don't think that you should tell your coaches about your, you give them your tax return or tell them what you make. But you should go in armed with knowing what you're able to afford to pay for school uh, for the athletes. So for your parents uh, in, in the webinar today or you athletes that are gonna have a conversation with your parents, uh, knowing <clears throat> what you guys are able to afford. So let's say a college is $50,000 a year to go to and your coach is going back and forth with the college, your high school club coach is going back and forth with the college uh, regarding a financial aid package. And that college coach says, I can give them $20,000 um, on, uh, uh, on that financial aid package. But really uh, what they need to do, what you'll need is uh, another extra $10,000 off that. So in order for you to be able to uh, have that, comp uh, that ability to have that negotiating power with uh, these colleges, it's best to make sure that uh, the college coaches uh, know what your, what your financial situation is and that your high school coach can go ahead and, and speak on your behalf on that. <clears throat> so we've talked about level of play. We've talked about geographically where you wanna be. We've talked about uh, scholastically where can you go. We've talked about financials. So now that you've kind of narrowed down these things in your mind, you're able to figure out what schools you want to attack. Now, how the heck are you gonna get there? So now let's, now let's talk about how um, athletes are seen, how athletes get exposure. Um, within the recruiting world. First, you are a high level athlete. You're a big time athlete, you're a big time recruit. All the major division one schools that you've heard about over the years what, that are on TV are coming after you. And what they'll do is they will come to you. And so you are that high level athlete and that's great for you and congratulations. Uh, I'm jealous, uh, but <clears throat> you have to 
uh, you're gonna you don't have to you don't need as much uh, of the exposure and the help as uh, some of the other athletes will. So I got a pictures here of of these major college coaches from the different from different sports and there's a typo here. It's not Nick Saban at the top uh, left hand, but that's Dabo Sweeney from the University of Clemson going to visit uh, a, a five star quarterback uh, from St. John Bosco. That's a picture of him there. And then and Coach Dabo Sweeney's got the paw on his on his shirt. Uh, the next one, Tom Izzo, one of the most famous college basketball coaches in the country. He's on a recruiting visit with a, with a high, high end recruit um, there in that picture in the right hand corner. Uh, uh, the bottom left picture, that's Kelly uh, Perez. She's the softball coach over at University of uh, Los Angeles, University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA, one of the best programs in the country. They won the College World Series last year for softball. And so she's off on a recruiting visit. She's going to that school and that, that parent or that player's house to recruit them. And then over here, Heather Olmstead, she is uh, one of the, the highest, uh, you know, paid, highest level coaches in women's volleyball. Uh, she was very close last year to uh, getting into the championship game. She was in the final four, uh, but lost in the final four. But uh, people were, are considering her probably to be the first woman in uh, Division One volleyball to win a championship here soon. So hopefully she crosses that threshold. But here again, she is with athletes. She will go out and find you. And, uh, and they have that budget to go to those major division one level athletes. So high level athlete, they come to you. Now for the rest of us, right? And I am, and I'm part of that group, right? I was a good athlete, not a major, uh, not a major high level athlete. I wasn't highly recruited. Um, I had to do a lot of my own stuff and, and I needed help from a coach. Um, so here are other ways that you guys can be seen, uh, seen at club tournaments. Okay. Uh, you guys have seen it showcases. So a club tournament, uh, your team, your club team is going to these club tournaments and playing in games, basketball tournaments, volleyball tournaments, softball, baseball, soccer tournaments. There are showcases where you go to these events where college coaches come and they're going to watch you and see what kind of skills you have, what kind of skills the athlete has. And so here's a quick picture of an athlete, uh, of a baseball player uh, about to take some batting practice and show off his batting ability. Uh, we were, field level is partners with an organization we're about to launch this and announce this soon up uh, they have uh, locations all up and down the the west coast but we were in seattle at a at a baseball showcase and so that's an example there uh lastly you can be seen at camps uh this is a picture of this a soccer camp uh where uh athletes are going to a bunch of athletes are going to these camps not getting only getting instruction uh, from the coaches at these camps but they're also being seen by college coaches as well so these are these are ways for athletes to be seen in this recruiting world. Next is coaches have a personal database, right? Um, you're an athlete, you wanna to play to a certain school, maybe your coach has a personal connection to that, to that college or that coach. So what are they able to do? They're able to jump on the phone and if I've ever seen a coach's office, this is the one right here. They're busy, they got a lot of stuff going on. They're on the phones trying to help their, their teachers, their deans, their administrators, their fathers, their wives, their brothers, their sisters. They're so busy, right? And they're on here grinding away for you. And so here's a cool picture of a coach on the phone. He's got a cell phone in front of them. They're probably ready to send out some text messages. But here's another way. Coaches have their own personal database where they're able to contact these coaches because of the years that they've you know, put into, the, into their coaching craft and through that meeting people face to face and, and generating those relationships. But then lastly, we're in a tech, we're in a tech world and you guys are here because you guys are in a tech world. You know how cool is it that you guys are able to sit here and listen to me talk uh, about this stuff from the, from the comfort of your own home or office on a computer screen or your phone. And we're in a tech world and we at field level have found a way to, and other companies have found a way to use technology for helping athletes find opportunities to play at the next level. So there's three core concepts. I'm gonna, uh, I'm, I'm not gonna talk about the, the names of the two other companies that I'm referencing here, uh, but I'm sure you've been contacted by them at some point in time. The first concept is this sales rep consultant doing yourself uh, method. So a company will um, reach out to you and try to generate uh, you as a, as a client of theirs where you would then pay to set up a profile, have a place to store your film, uh, they would then say that they're going to, on your behalf, be a, an agent or a sales rep for the athlete. And they're going to go out and get information out to college coaches about the athlete. Uh, in the end, um, and again, not to speak poorly about any of these concepts, uh, but in the end, uh, that, app, that person, that consultant that is uh, walking you through the recruiting process or uh, saying that they're going to 
advertise you or sell you or rep you uh, to college coaches doesn't have that uh, personal relationship with the athlete. Uh, so there's that one concept. The next concept is a do-it-yourself uh, concept, and that's a company will give you, uh, based on uh, how much you pay, a version of their platform where you're able to use all of the um, all the uh, contact information that they provide for you. They'll give you demos on how to write emails, what to send in text messages, how to talk to a coach over the phone or leave voicemails. And it's a do-it-yourself model. Athletes, parents, you do it on your own. Uh, they do give coaches the opportunity to monitor uh, what's going on, but it's not really a coach's platform. It's really a do-it-yourself for parents and, and coach, uh, parents and athletes. And again, coaches can monitor uh, the process. And then us, field level. And uh, obviously I'm saying this as uh, uh, you, would, you would think I'm biased, but um, I was a user of field level well before I became uh, an employee. And what field level does is it takes the way recruiting has been done for decades. And we've made it in a more tech savvy, simple way for coaches to connect nationwide. So for decades, high school coach and college coach meet, college coach comes to a high school and talks to a coach, college coach goes to a, to a, to a club facility, meets the coaches, learns about the athletes, and that's how they start generating the interest for these athletes. Well, that's great. And like we talked about before, athletes are able to be seen in these different camps and clinics and showcases and, and different things of that nature and tournaments. And college coaches and high school coaches have built relationships over the years because they're with each other. But if a coach is in one location, or in one part of the country as a college coach, and a high school coach is in another part of the location of the country, and they've never had a chance to actually meet in person, they haven't been able to develop that relationship. What we've done at Fuel Level is we've helped these coaches connect. Uh, much like LinkedIn, much like Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, we're connecting people. And what we do is when we connect people, they're able to now connect with each other about not only just becoming being coaches and how to help each other and best practices practices within their sport, but also to communicate about athletes. So now field level has built a tool to give to high school and club and, and college coaches to connect with each other to ultimately help the athletes find those opportunities to play at the next level. So what field level is going to do is they're going to help their athletes. The college coach is going to find athletes. We'll talk about this in a minute. They're going to find athletes through the search method. Or they're, and then they're going to contact the high school and club coach about connecting with them. 